So hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing, rocking and rolling. 2nd of April, 2019, no trade calls or recommendations, are responsible for the own stuff. We're here for educational purpose only. So quick, very quick update. Don't usually do these in the morning, but uh, I want to uh, uh, talk about something interesting. Again, we got a nice reaction overnight. As you saw, we said any kind of strength, in the RBA, on the RBA for us was was a sell. Uh, really, no reason to expect anything but uh, dovish commentary. And again, the bigger swings are in place, so that was a great little uh, little trade, little opportunity to get back short or scalp the short side. What I wanted to discuss is what's going on on Euro and on Swissy. Now, remember, we discussed going into the week the importance of this level on the Euro and the fact that even if we get a lot of funky action around these lows, we would not expect this to go from A to B in a straight line. We'd expect to see some kind of a bounce. And if we're going to get a tradable bounce, we'd expect that to come at these lows around the 1200 level. Okay. So something I wanted to draw your attention to here is the shorter term action. So one thing, of course, is um, a lot of more conservative traders are just going to be waiting for this, wait to see some kind of a fake out and basing candle, the green candle at lows here to get back long and try to try to play that move back to the 113, possibly all the way back into the 200 DMA. Right. If you're trying to be a little bit more tactical, if you're in front of your screens all day, if you're trying to read what's happening here into the morning, this is very interesting, right? So uh, we come in this 15 minute chart. We've come into uh, we based yesterday end of the day and then we started to rally right now. What happens is now you get shorter term or less experienced traders that try and get uh, long uh, with a uh, stop below these lows thinking that's it. I got the day low. But we know that when we're holding so close to an to a key level going into the overnight session, that's a key time for stops to get hit. That's a key time as the liquidity evaporates for the market to try and press through those key levels. So what's happening is basically, uh, in our opinion, a lot of short term players getting clipped overnight. You know, we come into Asia and right, bam, we print new lows. Then you got people say, OK, that's it. I got the low, but no way we take them out again. And then very people uh, as we go towards Asia, as we go towards Europe, people trying to come in very, very early, thinking they work harder than everybody else, getting long again, stops below those lows. But no, we print new lows again. Right. What's important here is how we get through London open, not what happened from um, New York close to London open. That's just the twilight zone. OK. But what what's interesting and what we're seeing here in the action is that you're seeing some kind of broadening wedge megaphone pattern, whatever you want to call it, trying to shape out here into the open. Now, what this tends to mean, this tends to mean that ultimately we break to the upside. This is not uh, a bearish kind of pattern. Now, we'll have to see what flows do. But if you're looking at this and you're seeing the way we closed right ahead of that 112 and then we take them out in the overnight session making a series of lower lows but without getting traction and seeing some kind of broadening action to me what that suggests is that any kind of dip here is the first time where we're starting to see interesting opportunity to try and get long anywhere inside this zone right looking for this series of lows to hold and to get that pop back up. Now, we discussed in the other video what upside targets could be, but I think this is a very um, interesting pattern and the open is going to be very interesting. The The highest odd setup is to wait for us to get through the turn of the hour to get through the open. But this is what I see trying to shape up here. Right. You see some selling coming in. Not not surprising to see a lot of chop as long as we stay inside this range here. But remember, also, the day close is going to be important now. The other thing or the opposite side to this is USD CHF, right? We discussed this uh, many, many times and we have the running shorts looking for the move back into the weekly uh, trend line on the weekly. Now, what we said going into last week's, we we're saying, you know, it's probably a good time, right? We'd prefer to take some profits here and wait to reshort higher. Now, that's pretty much where we are now, right? And it makes sense. 
if we're going to if that euro is going to play out that this is going to continue to get sold so what's interesting here is that we've got a lot of confluence we've got this bouncing right back into this zone that got offered repeatedly and we're bouncing right back pretty much into a 50 back of the move from a to be the 50 back is just the, uh, the 50 back is just above here so this is starting to be a very interesting zone you can look at it as a day close around that 50 back you can look at the shorter term action but it's it's the mirror image to euro so it's the same kind of play it's two different charts but also for those of you asking me about the swissy well the original short from these highs back into these lows is still very much in play it didn't make a lot of sense, you know, because sometimes the last pips can be the most expensive to be holding a full position here. So either you flan up looking to get short again, or you're just holding partials looking to get back to a full position here, right? So this is what we'd be looking for. Let's see if we get some traction, and that's pretty much where we stand, guys. Have an awesome rest of the day. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.